and thank you so much for joining me as I continue my conversation about acid-base chemistry. In this video, we're going to be talking about the pH scale. Hopefully it's something with which you have at least some degree of familiarity from earlier grades. In order to start our conversation, we first have to talk about what is called the self-ionization of water. To a very, very, very small extent, water, one water molecule will act as an acid and the other will act as a base. So one water molecule will donate an H and a plus to the other water molecule. So I'll get the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion. Now, this is such a small extent that it's not enough to conduct any electricity, but it is still a very meaningful and measurable extent. Now, if we are at 25 degrees Celsius, then that product, those have to be equal to one another, right? For every H plus I make, I get an OH minus, and the H plus times OH minus is one times 10 to the minus 14. Or if we want to do it in terms of the hydronium and the hydroxide, I get what is called KW, which is the acid dissociation or the dissociation constant for water. And note, this is only at 25 degrees Celsius that that is valid. Now, if I have a solution that is other than pure water, if my H plus or hydronium is greater than my hydroxide, that's when we would call it acidic. Now, that is true at all temperatures. So it doesn't matter whether it's 25 degrees or not. If I have more H pluses, so you may see particle diagrams where they draw H pluses and OH minuses. If my molarity, remember brackets mean moles per liter. If my molarity of H plus is greater than my hydroxide, then it is an acidic solution. And this is truly the best definition of acid, uh, an acidic solution, because it is independent of temperature, whereas KW does depend upon temperature. So let's take a look at a basic solution then. So if I have a solution in which my hydroxide ions dominate, now this would not be pure water, there would be, have to be something else in there that would react to form hydroxides if indeed my hydroxides dominate over my H+, then we have a basic solution, also called an alkaline solution. Okay? Now, if H+, equals OH-, then we have a neutral solution. And so that's at the heart of how we define acid or bases. Now, the pH scale is typically given at 25 degrees Celsius, which is fine because that's what you'll be working at most of the time. It would just be um, advanced chemistry or, of course, like IB chemistry, where you would have to know that temperature dependence. Okay, we have a scale. And on that scale, 1 times 10 to the minus 7th, is defined as neutral. And that would be my H3O plus concentration being 1 times 10 to the minus 7 is now considered neutral. So this scale would then go, because you can't see this picture as well as I would like, um, but let's say it's 1 times um, 10 to the 0 or 1 um, it, it actually goes negative, so uh, we, or zero. We won't talk about that, but um, it actually goes negative. Most scales won't show that, all right? And so that, and then the other direction, it would go 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Okay, now that scale is very, very awkward. And so scientists have developed a scale that is based that is, I shouldn't use that word, that is its foundation, okay, is the power that we see. 
because it's a little hard, especially if we're trying to draw a scale to be writing 1 times 10 to the minus 14, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 14. It really scrunches up the scale quite a bit. And so what this um, pH scale does is it zeroes in on the powers. Okay, so then we would have a scale going from 0 to 7 to 14. So that would be the gist of our pH scale. On this scale, as long as we're talking about it 25 degrees Celsius, an acid is classified as anything having a pH less than 7. Okay, now you have to be careful um, with that, and, and I'll show you in just a minute. A base has a pH that is greater than 7. And if it's exactly 7, we're going to call this neutral. Okay, I'm going to talk about the pOH scale in just a minute. But let's, let's, um, let's kind of ferret out a little bit more information on this, all right? So when we have this scale... All right. If you notice, what we're doing is, so we have 10 to the 0, we have 10 to the minus 7, we have 10 to the minus 14. So at this point, my H plus is equal to my OH minus. Now, this is defined as a pH of 0. Notice we don't look at the negative sign. We'll see the algebra of this later on. We're only taking that power, and then we have the 14. So this is what I want us to look at, is that as you notice, that as you are increasing your H+, plus, so we're increasing... our concentration of H plus, it is a decrease, this direction decreases in pH. So the relationship is as you increase your concentration of H3O plus or H plus, you decrease your pH. They are inversely proportional. Now the other thing that I want to point out on this scale is this. So if this is 10 to the 0, this is 10 to the 1, to the minus 1, this would be 10 to the minus 2. So we're just zero, you know, zeroing in on a, a small range here. You'll notice that as my pH changes by 1, that my H plus changes by a factor of 10. So this is, it decreases by 10 as I increase my pH each one unit. So let me see if I can write it differently here. If I increase my H3O plus by a factor of 10, I decrease my pH by a factor of 1. Okay, so that is at the heart of my pH scale. Now, there is also, in this picture that I have in my notes, gives you an idea of some of our common substances. So you know soda is very acidic. It's hard on your teeth. Um, tomatoes are acidic. Uh, hydrochloric acid, which is what you would use in pool acid, I mean, its strength would be all over the place, um, but could be weighed down at zero. Pure water um, with no ions in it, not tap water, Tap water has dissolved ions. Pure water um, would have a pH of 7. 
um, blood is right around that. Baking soda is a weak base. It's um, sodium bicarbonate, HCO3 is a weak base. Oven cleaners, very basic. A lot of household cleaners are very, very basic. Okay, so that gives you just an idea just so you can connect with things you know. Now, it is also common to talk about what is called a POH scale. Okay, you can think of this as an opposite of the H plus scale. And it measures the amount of hydroxide that is present. So let's, let me take a look at that in more detail and see if I can link these two together. So if I have, okay, so this would be a pH of 0, 14, 7. So this would mean my H3O plus is equal to 10 to the 0. Here it's 1 times 10 to the minus 7. Here it's 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Now, if I looked at my hydroxide, okay, this would be 14, 7, and 0. So that would be my pOH scale. And so my hydroxide here is 1 times 10 to the minus 14th. You notice it's all based on Kw at 25 degrees Celsius. Here my hydroxide is 1 times 10 to the minus 7th, and here my hydroxide is 10 to the 0. Okay, so you notice that my, remember, H3O plus it times OH minus at 25 degrees Celsius is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Well, if you look at this scale, you see 7 plus 7, 14 plus 0, 0 plus 14. Um, if we did more numbers in between, what you would see is that your pH plus your pOH is equal to 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we're going to start tying all this together mathematically. For now, we're, if there's a 1 in front, then all we had to do is take that power. Let me, I did a bad job of that. Let me remake that for you there, minus 14. If there's a 1 in front, all we need is the power. Okay, so 7. There's a 1 in front to get the pH or pOH. All you need is a power. So if I had um, here, I had 1 times 10 to the minus um, 11, okay, then my pOH would be, there's a 1 in front, so all you have to do is take the power. So my pOH would be equal to 11 there. If um, my pOH is 11, then this is a 3, my H plus is 1 times 10 to the minus 3. And hopefully you see that link with those powers. Okay. All right, so that introduces the pH scale to you. Um, increasing acidity in one direction, increasing basicity in the other direction. And really what you want to focus on at the core of this are your H plus molarity relative to your hydroxide molarity. And that's what truly defines acidic and basic solutions. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate your time.